guys, welcome back to Derby Coy. Right, today's the day. I hope they're going to be finished today. A diesel heater. Uh, I'm going to do the install in my business bunker. Um, now I've done the unboxing on this already, so we know what's in that. So, what I wanted today is get it installed, and I'll go over here and show you what's going down where that blue bucket is. That's where I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to make access through the side wall over there and the exhaust and everything is going out that way. So that's the plan for today. Um, I have decided, as I said in my unboxing, I was going to put it up on, consider pouring it up, up there, maybe, but I've decided to keep it on the floor. Um, I did think about putting it down here in the centre and then putting the exhaust out and stuff out the back but that's not going to give me good access I also thought about putting it down here and then running the exhaust out that way but obviously I don't want I need access down there so I don't want to stick an exhaust down there so I think it's going over there so that's the plan um, first thing I've got to do I've got to make access over there set the panel off get the insulation out so that's my first job get that done and then we can get it positioned where we need it and start the proper install. So let's get on. Okay, I now have access to what I need to do. Now, this is where my heat is going to go. Obviously, I'm on concrete, so I don't want to bolt it to that. I don't want to bolt it to the wall, and I can't bolt it to this side because this is my access. So, what I've made is this to go in there your legs are adjustable that is the bottom place you would normally screw on to your if you've got a, in a, um, a, cam, a camper van or something like that or your lorry or whatever that's one of the plates you use so obviously that's where the exhaust and the intake goes and the fuel line goes in there so I've bolted up in there yes it's unstable but I have put adjustable bolts on it to adjust the legs so I can get that where I need it, up or down here. The exhaust will come down and out the back here. The fuel line will come out here as well. <coughs> um, yeah. So what I've got to do is I've got to bolt the heater to this, put it in, and I can adjust the legs to stop it wobbling. I mean, it's not too bad at the moment, just one or two little adjustments. And that will give me enough clearance for the exhaust to come down and out. So yeah. Let me get the thing bolted on. I'll sh show you where I when it's bolted on, and we'll get it in place. Right, so this is the heater. It's a uh, five kilowatt heater. I did find the manual. Now it is in English, but <laughs> to be honest, it's uh, not that well translated. Um, it will will help you install it, but I looked online. I've got a lot more information so um, that's the exhaust that's the air intake and that's your fuel line intake so as I said that bracket I've got on that thing I made that is now going to stick on here okay so that's it attached to the uh, stand I have put the exhaust on and the breather but I'm going to run the exhaust through here so it actually comes out of this piece here so I've got to line that up and adjust it <coughs> so it comes out down here at the bottom but that's where it's going to be so I'm going access to it um, I'm also going to put my thing on the front there the fuel tank move this one out of the way it's going to go up here on the wall and the pump and filter down there so I think my next job is to position the exhaust through now when you do the exhaust this is quite soft metal so it was uh, out of shape to put it onto the bottom so I reshaped that up and got it on and put it on with a jubilee clip underneath and if you can see them under there get around all attached up under there nice and secure it is on quite tight, so hopefully that's made a good enough seal around in there 
and get no gases in there. So next job is drill a hole through here. Let's put this through. The breather pipe, I think I'm gonna run it from inside and it'll be over here somewhere. So that's uh, where the breather pipe's gonna be. Let's turn this thing off. Yep, so I'm gonna attach the breather pipe over here at the way, somewhere with the filter on top. So I'm recycling the clean air that's in there to help breathe it that way. The exhausts will be ported out through there. So let me find a hole saw and drill that through. Okay, so the exhaust has gone through and it's just sat there at the moment with the silencer on. Now one thing I will say is jubber clips that come with it, not very good. So I'll get some better jubber clips and stick them on. I've had uh, the first one I tried on the exhaust up here, just sheared off. Now this is loose at the moment, but I am going to build a bracket and attach it to secure it on the wall there. Um, the breather pipe at the moment is up here with the filter on. I think that'll be okay there. So we'll leave that there. Um, next job is I want to attach the fuel tank. We'll try and hopefully attach it to the wall. Um, up here. And it's attached by three bolts or three holes. I'm going to screw it to the wall and hopefully that's strong enough. If not, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to drill straight through this wall. It's only a single block wall. I'll drill straight through the back and put a bolt all the way through. A nut and bolt all the way through so I know it's definitely not going to come off. But I'll try it with raw, uh, screws first and raw plugs but I've got a feeling that's not going to hold it. But if it is, I'll just uh, stick a thing all the way through. Easy enough to do. Right, so that's my next job. Let's get on with that. Okay, for the fuel tank. Um, now it does come with this. Now this can be... If you go put it into, straight into your fuel tank. Something like that. If you've if you got it in a van, you can fit it one of those. But because I'm using this, what I need to do is I need to fit this thing in the bottom here. So it's got to go for the inside. Now to do that, I need to drill a hole in the bottom here. I want it so it's about, I don't know, 15, 20 mil off the bottom. So if there is any rubbish in there, it's not going to get pulled through. Um, so I need to drill a hole in there. Then what I have to do is I'll thread this piece of wire through the hole and it will come out the top in there. I then thread that, I'll do one hand, do one second, through there. I tie a knot in the end and I'll pull this all the way back through and I'll poke through the hole. I'll then attach the o-ring and the nut on the end to hold it in place and remove the wire. So. Um, excuse me. Now, like I say, I'm going to drill a hole, I'll measure it off, put a mark on there, about 20 25 mil off the bottom, something like that. I don't want it getting too low, so let me mark it off, drill a hole, and we'll get this thing put through. Okay, so hopefully, you can see I'll put that through there and tie the end off. So, what I'm going to do now is pull it through. All the way through to here and then it is quite tight I'm gonna twist it so the thread comes through it's a nice tight fit there we go it's just coming through now there we go all the way through and then I'm going to push that back through there. Like that all out. Ok, 
Okay, so somewhere down here we can see it. Got the eye ring. Let's stick that on. And then put that up. There we go, and that is sitting up here. So the fuel is not completely on the bottom. So hopefully any sediment in there won't come out. Happy with that. That's now gonna go on the wall. Okay, fuel tanks on the wall. I did decide in the end to put a bolt all the way through to secure it and just put some screws in that side to stop it turning. But that is going nowhere. And there's my thread. So the fuel will only come to about here. So any sediment then it's not going to get pulled through so very happy with that right um, next thing from here I need to put my fuel line my fuel filter and fuel pump which are going to be connected on the wall down here so let me get them together and we'll get that in and it's coming along nicely right so now I'm going to install the fuel pump now I've put the fuel pump in its rubber bracket which will be attached on the wall but I'm going to put this one in in line now if you look inside here there's a little mesh filter now the mesh part you can see the mesh is a, a gap there that part this side goes towards the filter so that will be at uh, the fuel tank sorry so that will be in line there like so See in that way and then that will go then to the filter the pump sorry but the pump needs to be situated at a slight angle so it's going to come down the wall through the filter into the pump now the pump needs to be set between 15 and I think it's 15 and 30 degrees so you don't want it flat and you don't want it upright so you want it on a slight angle I'd say somewhere around there would do it okay now the side of the electrics is the side that goes towards the heater because the fuel comes in this side and it's pumped out that side so that should be like that about there so I'm going to attach the I've already put the raw plug in so I'm going to attach the pump to the wall and then we'll cut the pipe and attach the fuel filter and everything else we need to do so let's get this in okay that's in so fuel into fuel filter down into the fuel pump so that's at a slight angle which then pumps it up through down there and underneath there into the heater so that's everything done outside apart from we're gonna at some point we're gonna have to connect this up and do the electrics for the pump and I might put some tape around that just to keep it waterproof it should be watertight anyway because these go outside if you got it on a vehicle you put the most people put these outside underneath so that'll be a nice watertight fit anyway um, yeah so that's it for now out here so I've now got to go into here and what I'm going to fit up now is connect the electrics to this and run that round to the LCD controller that's the next job once that's set up, I'll connect that up. I'll connect the air up. I mean, I can leave it open for now, but I've got my ducting to go on there. I have got to get more ducting. And then fill it up, and it's time to test it. So let me get these electrics sorted, and uh, away we go. Right, here we are. So I'll put the cable through, stick it on there. And I've just put some tape on it for now, an anti-waterproof socket, but I want to make sure. I have got to tidy all these wires up yet. Now, I give you quite a decent positive wire with a fuse on it. I think it's a 20 amp in there. Um, put the, I'm going to find it again. But that's all they give you for the negative, because they want, if it's in a van, you can just earth that to your van. I'm assuming so <clears throat> now this is 1.5 mil wire now 
I've only got one mil wire to extend this at the moment so I'm gonna to have to get some more it might do it but I don't want to chance it overheating so I'm gonna get one and a half mil some one and a half mil wire and extend that because that's got to go all the way around to my battery uh, but I have at the moment put the air on it the pipes are just tempering out I've got to get some more pipe for that um, so yeah let me just show you inside where I've got to run the battery to right <coughs> got to run from there I've got to run all the way across excuse all the mess across across there to there so I've got to go the full length of this here which is what is that now I can't remember the width of that now I think it's 12 foot I think that's 12 foot so I've got to go from that corner over there 12 foot over to here I'm running up here, which is seven foot. So approximately 21 feet. I've got to go, but I want to go more. So I'll get about 25 foot of wire just to do that. But I have run the cable up and I've stuck the controller just there. And I, I have got my little uh, controller here as well, remote control. Let's turn it on and off. Uh, but if I need to, when I'm here, I want to. I can easily get to these, pile them up and down, whatever I've got to go. So, there's not much more I can do until I've got that power cable in. So, I'm going to have to go and get some cable. When I get the cable, I've got to tidy all this rubbish up, what I don't need, and I'll get that cable in. And I think then we're ready to put some diesel in. So, I'll be back with you when I get this cable. Okay guys, back again. Um, right, heater, back to the heater. Um, made a couple of changes, um, and I've had to do something just temporary for now, because my cable still hasn't arrived. I had to order it from uh, off the internet, because I couldn't get the, the uh, thickness cable I needed to get in my local shop. And it hasn't arrived yet. Anyway, but I've done a temporary one, so I'll spin you around and we'll show you. Okay, what I've had to do, my controller, I've had to put over here, because this cable, unfortunately, when I put it over, initially over there, I run the cable back and when I try to plug it in down there it wasn't long enough so it's fine there now obviously I've got my electrical cable yet so what I've done I've just brought the battery around this is just temporary to, to show you test it up and get it working when it's all done all this cable will all be at the back and out the way so it's uh, not in danger of getting damaged or heat or anything uh, right so as I said the controller is now here so I have primed the um, pump and everything so there is actually diesel down at the heater it's all primed it through to there so I haven't tested it yet so I'm not 100% on the controls but I know you've got to press and hold that now that is on its uh, warm up cycle now if I can I'll come back to you when that's warmed up and I'll turn this all the noise off in here is making a bit of a noise in here. It'd be a bit quiet so you can hear the uh, pump going. Okay, it's actually it's done its uh, warm up now and it's. Put the light back on. Uh, the diesel pump's going, the fan's going. It's still on a bit of a warm up, but I'm on level three at the moment and the intake and the exhaust gas is telling you that's all working fine. So it's going to take a little while for it to warm up and uh, the fan will build up even more as it goes now it's going to wait now for that to uh, come up to a bit of temperature so i'll leave it at that okay let me just check to see what's coming out <laughs> it's just starting to warm up now what we have now that is the temperature of the unit is up to 90 degrees the actually internal temperature as you can see that's going up fairly rapid and it's only ambient temperature here is at 19 okay guys it's uh, Still warming up, but it's been a couple of minutes. Let's get 
and again as you can see I've actually set it to Celsius so I've actually just set it to 26 at the moment and as you see it was on 19 there and that's up to 20 in this corner just up under 21 to be actually between 20 and 21 um, but I can tell you on the thermometer over there it is now is at 18 it's now at 18.4 so let me check you over so, so it's been a couple, only a couple of minutes and the internal temperature here is 18.4 and it's uh, still going on, still building up at the moment. So, as you can see we're up to, it's not full temperature yet, we're up to Ford on that one. So it uh, tells you what temperature you're at. When they all turn red that means that it's full temperature. Back on soon. I think it was. There you go. I don't know how well you can see this on there. But my feet are getting quite toasty. That's actually gone up to 18.6. I'm not at full temperature yet. As you see, that one's just gone up to 21. It's flashing between 20 and 21. As I said, with the battery and everything else, it's only temporary. Actually, while that's doing, I should take you outside. I'm going to have a listen to the... Uh, the fuel pump. I haven't got that much fuel in there. The oil you'll probably hear now, you'll hear the exhaust, which is down there. And you'll hear the fuel pump ticking away. I can't really hear that inside, to be honest, in there. Um, I am going to put an enclosure on this, even though this is, I know it's only 12 volts and that is that bare wire there, but. I have put some tape around the actual plug itself, uh, but yeah, all running good. I said the noisiest part is the, uh, <laughs> the exhaust down the bottom, uh, but yeah, I am going to enclose this here, and that will quieten that down a little bit. Uh, that is uh, electromagnetic, so every tick on that is the little um, piston inside, in and out, and it's pulling a tiny, tiny bit of fuel through. Uh, it depends on how, how fast you have it, temperature-wise. Obviously, when it reaches temperature and gone tick over, that slows down. But yeah, I'm very happy with that. Not as nice as I expected it to be, especially in here. Can't hear that ticking at all. What we there? There you are. Have a quick look. We're now at 18.8, and it's quite snug in here, actually. So what we have over here? Yeah, I'm still set at 26 and it's still saying 21 and as you can probably see now we've got the one um, red line so we're nearly it's full temperature what temperature are we at 178 degrees 180 internal temperature oh yeah all going well so when that's up to temperature I'll come back to you okay it's been where are we now probably six seven minutes if that and it was at 18 oh and it just this second turned to 20 degrees in here um so i'm very happy with the uh let's get this thing back up here again with the way this is actually working whether you can see this right i've set it to 23 at the moment now i think what happens i need to do more testing but what happens is when this reach reaches 23 um, the fan and everything will, will slow down and it just goes into a tick over mode um, so it's uh, obviously the fan will, pull, will slow down and it's still producing heat to try and keep that ambient temperature up and obviously if you have a sudden drop in temperature outside and it drops in here it will come back up so um, if I drop it to 22 let's see what it does I'm just assuming it will do that Right now, that has actually dropped down. It was on full power, it's actually dropped down one. So it is slowly, it doesn't want to drop the heat off completely or damage it. So I think it is slowly dropping this down, which is the temperature in the fan. So we'll uh, come back again in a minute. Just keep an eye on it and see what happens. Okay guys, so what I did, I was about to drop the temperature there because I don't want it getting too hot with the wires down there. That's where they are at the moment, I was just testing it. So. I dropped it to 20, I mean it's bloody warm, it's already up to 21 
on the main one over there um, and it's 23 here uh, as you can see dropping that now the fans drop down and it will keep always oh, drops even more then it's just keeping it on tick over now um, to keep the ambient temperature up so yeah very happy with it uh, I'm going to shut it down now and I'll you know, quickly show you okay it's probably I don't know, 10 minutes if that up to 21 in here so very happy um, okay so I wanted to shut it down all I need to do is press the power button that's it and it's off and that will shut the burner off but the fan will continue and it will cool, the, cool it all down now um, as you can hear the fan stop now virtually it's cooling right down and that's just now in tick over mode and that's uh, busy in the garden <laughs> yep so you can see there the fan's still going just to cool everything down so very happy with that yeah okay guys so I've got a lot more testing to do um, let's grab this now as I said I did find the manual <laughs> for what it's worth um, for that controller I've got that page or two pages and it doesn't tell me a lot at all it's not well translated at all um, but the installation was helped by watching other videos um, so yeah I've got a lot more research to do and checking out and testing um, I am as I said I'm still waiting for wire to come to put over there uh, I have ordered a um, circuit breaker isolator switch for the power line I know it's only I think it's 16 amp it draws at its maximum 16 amp so I've ordered one so if there is any issues myself or Graham can just come and flick the switch and it'll cut the power off to the unit completely so there's no actual power getting to it um, hopefully there won't be any issues um, it as I said before it does come with the remote control you've got your on off and your temperature up and down and it's very snazzing for a little stop you pressing the buttons so yeah um, what else is that yeah waiting for the power cable to come that battery will all over it out the way so a lot more testing uh, but I'm really happy with it so far I mean the 21.3 has got to in here now and now it's just on its cool down so my koi are going to be very happy um, Talking of the koi, my last video I put out, obviously you all seen, I was very deflated and very upset um, about the issues I had, but as you can see, smiling again. But I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody um, for all your, the amount of comments, um, messages, Facebook messages to myself, private messages, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, all your suggestions and everything else um, I really needed it as you can see I was feeling a bit down so I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who commented and give me your support and help it's so good to see the community coming back together again um, and helping each other out uh, and just giving that little bit of support it really helps it gives you that boost so uh, again massive massive thank you for that um, what else in here still got to do my shelves there to come so as I said, a lot more testing to do on this, but I'm really happy in here. I said my car is going to be nice and snug throughout the winter. Um, so yeah, very happy. So I think that's it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hit that bell for your notifications. Don't forget, forget to pop over to Facebook. I'll see you on there. So until the next one, stay safe. Jobs are good.